virtuality may well still be in its early days as a platform, but already there are signs that the arena is starting to mature. 2020 then is offering a whole bunch of new VR titles, and a few of them look as though they could easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the more traditional AAA games out there. Let's jump in then and have a look at what could well be some of the best VR games of 2020. As soon as I played it, Arizona Sunshine shot straight to the top of my favourite VR shooters. And whilst VR games have come a long way since the release of this title, it nonetheless remains high on my list. It's possibly only natural then that I have high anticipation for After the Fall, as it's coming from the same developers. Set in a post-apocalyptic world, the year is 2005. Decades earlier, in an alternate 1980s, the world suffered a cataclysm created by humanity itself, resulting in the infestation of zombie-like snowbreed. Players take on the role of survivors, attempting to make their way through the hostile environments. The game has a number of modes, which includes a campaign, as well as solo and multiplayer cooperative content. It appears the developers are making a big deal out of the cooperative nature of the game, which will allow up to four players to work together. And as to be expected from a modern VR title, the game mirrors your real-world movements, enabling you to use your own combat style. After the fall, will be released on PC and PSVR. Released in 2017, Lone Echo remains perhaps one of the best examples of VR gaming so far. The sequel then is set to release on the first quarter of 2020 and has some very high expectations to live up to. Whilst I personally appreciated the high production quality of the original title, it nonetheless felt a little too on the rounds for my tastes, but I'm sure most will disagree and obviously your mileage will vary. Lone Echo 2 then will pick up where the previous title left off, and perhaps one of the most compelling aspects of Lone Echo was the simulation of Zero-G, and this really did put the VR tech to good use. Initial trailers, as well as demos of early gameplay, show some truly spectacular environments, and the writing and characters also appear to be as good as ever. Now, as with the number of VR games coming this year, Lone Echo 2 is a platform-exclusive title, remaining firmly available only on the Oculus headsets. Personally, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how well this technically demanding game performs on the Oculus Quest, and its release will be later this year. Paper Beast is another VR exclusive title, this time coming for PSVR. For me, the beauty of VR has always been the ability to explore worlds and environments that cannot possibly exist in real life, whether that's alien planets or surreal dreamlike landscapes. Paper Beast, then, is a title that aims to take players on a somewhat unusual journey into a living world that has evolved its very own environments and life forms. To say that Paper Beast is a difficult game to describe is certainly an understatement. Essentially, the concept behind the game is that the world you play within was self-emergent, being born from the masses of big data carrying around the internet. The flows of certain parts of this data and the manner in which it interacted gave birth to the world in which the player finds themselves, and as the data flows and changes, it impacts the environment, sometimes in harmful ways, other times in positive ways. And all the while, the world is full of life, in the form of creatures. In short, the world of Paper Beast is intended to be its very own ecosystem, and you as a player are there to observe, experience and interact with it. It's a curious concept, and one which I'm intrigued to try out. Paper Beast should be arriving sometime in 2020, and as yet, no firm release date has been set. At this point, it would be easy to believe that yet another Battle Royale game would have nothing new to offer. Well, that would perhaps be true if the platform in question wasn't VR. Population 1 is an upcoming new entry into this popular genre then, and it includes many of the unique features that only VR can offer. Set in a one square kilometer world, the ability to fly, build and fight are all there, and perhaps more importantly will be the motion controlled actions such as climbing, and it really is things such as this that always tend to make the player feel as though they truly are inside the game world. What's more, the developers are very keen to point out that they have spent a huge amount of time to implement and design in-game motion that limits the effects of motion sickness that some people experience. The graphical style of Population 1 doesn't really appear to offer anything that makes it stand out from the crowd, however, 
that isn't necessarily a bad thing and will no doubt appear to fans of Fortnite and the like. Population 1 is a PC title that will support the major VR headsets such as Vive and Oculus. Currently, it is also possible to sign up for a closed beta, so if you're interested in that, do check out the links in the video description. Now, retro games are always great for invoking a little bit of nostalgia, and Pixel Ripped 1995 looks to set to play on this. Dropping you two and a half decades into the past, you will find yourself playing games from the 16-bit and 32-bit eras. The twist, you are playing these games in order to save the worlds. This is the second title in the series, with the first being set in 1989 and the 8-bit era. Pixel Ripped 1995 features numerous gaming genres from the time period, including platformers, RPGs, brawlers, space shooters, and racing games. Both the games themselves, as well as the numerous environments, certainly look to capture the feel of the mid-90s, so this should certainly be a good opportunity for people to step back in time. So shooters really do feel as though they should be a natural fit for VR, and to an extent that has certainly proven true with a large number of shooter titles out there, and in recent times the quality of these has certainly improved. However, I feel it's pretty easy to make the case that no VR shooter has, as of yet, been released that comes even close to rivaling the top quality and non-VR shooters out there. Whilst Phantom Covert Ops certainly isn't aiming to claim that crown, it certainly appears that developer End Dreams has put a lot of effort into the title. The somewhat unique approach with this game is that the player is permanently sat in a kayak and navigates the environments by rowing, and this certainly will be a great approach for those players who prefer seated VR experiences. Growing around, of course, isn't the focus of the game. The idea here is instead stealth, infiltrating areas and silently taking down enemies in order to achieve your objectives. Phantom Covert Ops then certainly appears to be offering something fresh and should be an interesting experience for owners of the Oculus headsets when it arrives later this year. As soon as it was clear that VR was rising in popularity after the announcement of the original Oculus Rift, one of the first things I wanted to experience in VR was a truly immersive cyberpunk world. Now, there's certainly been a number of titles over the years, but few look to be as complete as this latest entry into the genre, the upcoming titled Lo-Fi. Now, it's clear that Lo-Fi is a fantastic looking game and the visuals fit the bill perfectly for a cyberpunk world. Within the game, you take on the role of Lo-Fi, an individual that lacks the capability to access the VR worlds the rest of the world's population have access to. In short, this leaves you with little more than the ability to roam and police the real world. It seems that the idea for Lo-Fi is to offer players an open world of freeform experience, and therefore has little in the way of a campaign focused story. Instead, the players are encouraged to create their own adventures, which includes tackling criminals, exploring the world, or visiting a variety of different hangouts. Lo-Fi made an appearance on Kickstarter towards the end of 2019, and access to a development build is already available for those who want to pre-purchase. The game will be available for all major PC-based headsets. Now, it really is hard to imagine a more perfect fit for VR than Iron Man. Donning your VR headset and finding yourself inside your very own Iron Man suit just seems perfectly ideal. This PlayStation exclusive then is set to place players directly in the shoes of Tony Stark, where he finds himself in the position of having to defend himself as well as everything he has built from the villain known as Ghost. Now, this game seems to be receiving some fairly high levels of anticipation, yet for me, this is a bit of a weird one. I've included it in this video because clearly it's going to be a big release and a lot of people really do want to play it and there's potential for sure for this game to be great. But unlike the other titles I've mentioned so far, I'm really uncertain about the quality of this one. To me, the gameplay looks super generic and if I can dare say it, it looks very dated as well. But this may simply be me misjudging things. In either event, I'm a pretty big fan of all things Iron Man, so this game is something I certainly want to give a fair shot. I'd also love to know your initial impressions of this title based on what we've seen so far, so do let me know in the comments section below. As mentioned, Iron Man VR is exclusive to PSVR and has a release date for the 28th of February this year. Half-Life Alex. Without a doubt, is going to be the biggest selling VR title of the year and potentially the biggest selling VR title ever. 
Shortly after this game was announced, demand for VR headsets apparently went through the roof, so there's certainly an indication there of just how many people want to play this game. Half-Life Alex then is a prequel, and it tells a story of one of the main characters of the franchise, Alex. Now, aside from the fact that this is a Half-Life title, there are two very appealing things to this game. Firstly, the graphics are absolutely great, and from what has been shown so far, they're leaps ahead of anything else on VR out there. Secondly, the full-on physics the game seems to have are truly next-gen VR. The only real comparison to what Half-Life Alex seems to offer uh, in this regards is Boneworks. And perhaps one of the best things about the announcement of this game is that its release is really not all that far away and is set for March 2020. The game of course will support all Steam VR compatible headsets. So there we have it then, a selection of my most anticipated VR titles for 2020. It's certainly a year that's going to bring virtual reality to a lot of people's attention. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.